I'm Diego Cordovez. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. And today we're lucky because we have one of the most interesting, most candid, most and most recognizable players in poker, uh, Jean Robert Balland, who's made his name on Survivor and in the mainstream arena, but who in the poker world is right in the middle of you know, the medium to high stakes games, not just playing them, but arranging them. Starting them, yeah. And uh, he's someone who's very open about his life on Twitter and in other social media, and I suspect uh, that'll be the case with us today. So I heard you were playing Omaha 8, where you got a spot where you got five cards, and the other guy had the traditional four heads up, which seems like a, a crazy spot to me. So is this just the kind of spot that people are willing to give you based on some reputation or some craziness? How do you, how do you get these things? Well, that actually wasn't Omaha 8. That was actually PLO. Yeah, PLO. Oh, PLO. PLO, 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 PLO even high. stronger. <laughs> right. Even crazier. Um, well, you know, the way I feel about it is if anybody ever wants to give me an extra card in any game, I'm taking it. Of course. And uh, at that time, it happened to be a kid, Harrington 10, Harrington uh, trying to make a name for himself. And I think he actually did quite a good job. You know, it's interesting because he ended up losing about twenty thousand dollars in that match. But uh, you know, all people remember is that uh, I got spotted five cards to four, which actually works out well for me and for him, I guess, because uh, you know I've actually had uh, other people offer me that spot since. Really? Uh, including one big name player, uh, Gabriel uh, Gabe Gabe uh, Gabe Taylor. Gabe Taylor offered me that spot. Interesting. And uh, wow. Because, you know, I can see, as you mentioned, for someone who's coming on the scene and gives you a reputation as an action guy, someone right. who's willing to gamble. Now, Gabe Thaler, who I've known for a while, is a guy who's very much about the edges and right. very smart, very sensible. Right. He must really figure he has an edge. Well, he did it. at the time. Since then, I've <laughs> uh, I've asked him when we're playing the match, and he's told me that he no longer wants to play it. <laughs> and I said, well, we already had an agreement. And he says, yeah, but we didn't say for how much or for how long. So, right. you know, basically he's saying that uh, at this point he right. can just play one hand it. and quit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, Or, or uh, offer uh, five cent, ten cent blinds or something. Right, like right. That. Well, you know... Uh, it's interesting because, uh, you know, anybody can back out of a bet. Billy Baxter actually told me one time, he's like, he's like you know what, there's uh, everybody's different thresholds. Whenever a bet is taken and accepted, there's like a reasonable amount. He says, for you, uh, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if, I, say, if I say I'm going to bet and with my peers, you know, if I'm betting with Doyle and some of these other guys, you know, that means I pretty much have to put out ten or 20000 on that bet. He said, if you say you bet with me, that's like a $3,000 bet. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, he's, a, he's like, different people out of their threshold. Maybe for this person it's 500000 but but something reasonable within your range. You can't just, uh, and, he's, he's and, uh, and I really cold. like that he said right, that. Right, that, that because, that's great. Because it is true. Because it, if I'm making guy. a bet with Joe, you know, with Joe Cassidy, pretty much, or, or with Huxley, pretty much the line is, you know, it's got to be a $1,000 or two thousand dollars to just say, hey, you know, this is a security settle. If Phil right. Ivey says we're going to bet without That's no amount, you know, right, 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 right. seven right. figures. Yeah, it's got to be. So, so I mean, I love, I, so, I really love that conversation. So, John Robert, you speak. You were mentioning someone else making a name for themselves. You've made this amazing name and brand for yourself. I knew you from before. Diego knew you from before as a player around LA, but. You burst into the national consciousness when you made a final in a World Series of Poker Circuit event, I think. That was an 05, right? Right. Mm -hmm. How and Gabe Taylor was at that table, too, actually, and so was Phil Ivey. How much right. of what we see is the real person, and how much is a cartoon character that you're manipulating for benefit? Um, I actually feel like I'm just being me, and I, I think part of... Uh, the attraction of, of my brand, as you called it, is just uh, that I keep it real. I'm not afraid to uh, l expose the the ugly side or or the uh, the difficult side, the struggles. And a lot of uh, poker players and a lot of gamblers can just relate to, hey, you know what? <laughs> I've run just like that for that long, you know. And uh, and they're like, uh, some of them kind of hate you, and then they say, hey, wait a second. 
You know, he's he's really telling it like it is, and you know, I've been in that struggle, and I I've been in a spot where like you know I've got a guy staking me, and I booked this many losses for him. It's like I, I'm almost embarrassed to report back. I'd rather pull money out of my own bank account than have to uh, uh, report another loss. And 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 uh, uh, there's something about when somebody can just relate to that. They're like they start to appreciate exactly where, where you're in, and then uh, where, where you're at, and then. Uh, I could not believe the amount of support I had. I had haters switch over to fans in the middle of this World Series event because they're like, wait a second, this guy's got a shot to do this, mm -hmm. you know? Well, people respect the honesty, as you say. I mean, on your Twitter feed, you're logging your results, and of course, everyone wants to present the image that it's always great and, you know, everything is, is beautiful, but, I mean, just, I think just yesterday or today, you were back down to zero, right. and you've got big upswings, big downswings, although part of it is that you're also playing big. I mean, obviously you're playing way beyond what your nominal bankroll should support. Right. So you're comfortable with the swings, you're comfortable with the ups and downs, and you're still going to be in action, right. which is not typical for someone who's just following who says, if they're down to zero, they might just be down to zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, to be honest with you, at this point, you know, yesterday I, I was literally down to zero, or was it two days ago? Yeah, two days ago I was literally down to zero, and uh, to be honest with you, uh, yesterday I, uh, down to zero, where I was actually out of action, and in a spot where I booked so many losses in a row from my my backer, I don't even feel like I can even ask him because if I was in his spot, I wouldn't want to continue on right now. I, I may want to continue later, but at least take a break because it's like right. down this, you, this, you know, it, it's it's so brutal how often I've booked booked L's, you know? You, you, you Twittered the other day and you have a big Twitter following and you've done You've uh -huh. done a good job using that. That you advised your your backer to just cut you off for a while. Right. Sometimes it's it is the best thing to take a break. Right. Backers right. Right. Better respect that. That you know yourself enough. It's not saying that you're not going to win for him. It's just saying maybe this is not the best time to right to continue. And to be honest with you, actually, I, I actually drafted that email. I didn't actually send it to him, and then did well the next day. And now it's like I do we, uh, I'm still in that situation where I haven't really communicated. Yesterday to get back in action, I actually borrowed. Ten thousand dollars from uh, from Crazy Marco, and uh, went all the way down to like twenty five hundred with that ten thousand. You know, not really knowing what I was going to do, and finally booked a win yesterday. Like I think I won like ten or twelve thousand yesterday, and it's just amazing how just one little win this morning. I woke up with a level of confidence, like <laughs> okay, you know, I, I, I know I'm supposed to be beating the game. I, I you know the the game, and and that's one of the things. Also, I'm not sure if you're you're, you're aware of what I'm doing. I've created a game. That's in 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 my favor. I mean, we're playing uh, draw games. We're playing no limit deuce to seven. I mean, uh, you've heard of mixed games, but you've never heard of a mixed game with no limit deuce to seven in it. So I have people that are like solid poker players trying to play a little bit of no limit deuce, and it's like the the uh, you're cherry picking the games, the rotation. Right. I mean, and and, and and you know, there's a couple games in there that aren't like my strong point. Like uh, stud high is not a game that I consider myself an expert at, or. Uh, um, you know, even stud high low, but uh, but you know, I, I'm I'm familiar with these games. No limit deuce is a game that's like new to most people. Oh, is there so, you're, so you're playing against Billy Baxter? <laughs> no, no, Billy's not playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I was, I was interested in that because there was a time about a year ago when someone told me that you were in LA and that you were playing against Billy Baxter, oftentimes heads up. And right. I thought, well. Obviously, this is with someone else's money, or this is just a suicidal no, no, desire. No, no, that was but that was, was just an education. No, no, no. That was uh, that was actually with my own money. And to be honest with you, uh, he quit me. I didn't quit him. Uh, we played uh, we played for a while. It was mostly here that, uh, that we were playing. We were he and I were starting the game, whether it was heads up or three handed, four handed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually did find that game, but it wasn't just no limit dues. We were playing three games. We okay. were playing Badugi, which you know I have a pretty strong edge over Billy in, and we were playing Deuce to Seven Triple Draw, and I, I would think we're about even money in that game. And then no limit dues. He's a small favorite over me, but overall. Um, but did this really oh, sharpen overall. up your? Because you mentioned Pardon the deuce me? to you mentioned the deuce to seven no limit quite a bit. Right. And I've seen where you've in other other places too. You've really been kind of. Looking for action in that game, was that whole period with Billy 
really important in your own development, or had you already learned the game? Oh, it, it, it was that? it was uh, fantastic in, in in me developing that game. You know, I I uh, I believe that I understand that game very very well, and and I'm not afraid to play with any. I mean, if you play with Billy Baxter every day, who's who's going to scare you in that game? And I'll tell you. I mean, there are two people that still uh, do scare me a little bit in that game, and that's Vince Musso and Doyle Brunson. And you know, the Doyle one is the one that surprised me because I really figured not to be scared of Doyle after playing with Billy all the time. But uh, man, that guy's amazing. That guy is amazing. He and says he loves that game. It's his favorite game. He, he, and you know what? It's because he's just so good at it. And I mean, seriously, it's like if you're sitting there and you're trying to hold a jack. You know, and he's drawing. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this guy is firing, and he's firing an amount that uh, you're going to want to pay him off. And when you pay him off, he's going to show you the goods. And uh, when you fold, you're going to question yourself. He's going to look back at his hand, like, like you know, like, you know, what, what, what just happened here? And then, you know, you just scratch your head, wondering what the heck just happened. In that in that game, I think the the textbook Doyle style of power poker works very well and he's the master of it. I'm telling you right now there's like uh, there's, there's, there's no one I'd like to play less in that game. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop brought to you by Phil Till Poker and Jean Robert, Jean Robert has lived up to his billing. Uh, we'll talk about his very interesting life so we're going to have him back next week for part two.